Hi, this is Dr. Lassane back with another screencast for LSSL 5360, that's Children's Literature for Summer of 2014. I want to talk a little bit more about some of the assignments for the class today. And so I'm here at Live Binders. I've already logged in. I'm going to click on the binder for 5360 and come and look a little bit more at the assignments for this class. So I'm going to click on the yellow tab that says Assignments. As you can see, there are some sub-tabs here. Um, let's start with due dates. always think that that's a pretty good thing to start with. If you're in Summer 1, that's your tab. You click on the file that's there. It will open up as a Word document. And you'll see the due dates for the assignments. Please bear in mind that everything comes due fairly quickly in the summer, and that's because we have a very short semester. So here we go, opening up. Not much to see here. You have three assignments, and basically here they are. Your um, annotated bibliographies are due June 21st. Those are the five bibliographies we looked at in the syllabus for the award-winning books. These are all picture books. You're going to read 10 books for each of the five lists, so that's 50 books that you'll read quickly during the month of June and annotate them in using the, the guidelines, the directions that are there. I'll go over those guidelines and directions for you a little bit later in this screencast. And then the other two assignments, the blog, which subsumes the textbook assignment for the summer, is due June 30th. All work is due by midnight on the day that it's assigned. Late work is not accepted, but you can certainly turn work in early. I've not yet set up Blackboard to receive any assignments because this semester's not begun. So if you're working on something, just keep it in a file until everything's open and available to you. Those are the due dates for Summer 1. Let's look at the due dates for Summer 2. So we need to come back here, click on Summer 2 due dates, click on the link, open the file, and hope that everything opens up here. Here we go. And here are the summer two due dates. Uh, you'll see there's very little difference. They're still going to come pretty quickly. Your annotated bibliographies will be due July 22nd, and your blog, which includes the textbook assignment, is due July 31st. Again, all work is due by midnight on the assigned date. Late work is not accepted, but work may be turned in early. So that'll give you some kind of idea about the due dates so you can be kind of planning out and working toward those dates. Let's look at the actual assignments themselves, starting with the annotated bibliography. When you click on the link, once again, you'll see it takes you to a link for a Word document. You have the option of opening it or saving it. I'm not saving it because I already have it on my desktop, but you might want to do that so that you have it on your desktop. I'm going to go ahead and open this in a format that's a little bit more easy to read. And what you'll see is I've given you step-by-step -step directions for what should be included in each of the annotated bibliographies. The first annotated bibliography, and actually you could do these in any order since you're turning them all in at once, but I think this is a good one to start with, asks you to read 10 Caldecott and or Caldecott honor winning books. Once again, as it's stated in the syllabus, you'll see here, the book should cover a 50 year range. So if you're starting in 2014, go back at least 50 years to pick up some of the earlier Caldecott and Caldecott honor books. I think it's important to look at what books looked like in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, and now in um, 2014, uh, or at least in the 21st century. So take a look at a range of them. You'll also probably find the later books a little bit easier to find out of the libraries, and you should have no trouble at all locating 10 Caldecott or Caldecott honor winning books. These are part and parcel of any good school library at the elementary level and certainly part of any um, public library as well. So tips for doing this assignment. Number one, all annotated bibliographies need to use APA format. Simply go online, type into your Google search bar APA format. There are fabulous websites that tell you exactly how to do it. There are also websites that will put it in correct format if you type in the information. 
but we need to use APA format that's required of the department. Uh, number three, bibliographies are always, always, always done in alphabetical order by the author's last name. Just a hint here, Chris Van Allsburg, his last name is Van Allsburg, so don't put him under A, put him under V, should you come in contact with that one of his books. So they need to be in alphabetical by author order. Your annotation should be short. I have 200 words or less. And that's actually a few more than I generally recommend, but I'm trying to give you a little bit of wiggle room this summer. Remember the final product, the annotated bibliography, should look like something you would hand out at a parent night or at a school board meeting. So appearance matters. Book covers should be part of the final product. It would be nice if you have some kind of themed art or border or some other format to do this. Some people have elected to use publisher. That's not required, but that's one way of making sure this looks good. Be sure that you include the year that the book received the award at the end of your annotation. Since this award is given for illustration, in your annotation, I'm expecting to see some response that has to do with art. So follow all the directions, be sure to watch all the screencasts for the class since there's more information about this assignment contained in them. And please be sure to leave sufficient time to submit this assignment by the stated deadline. Now as you scroll through and look at the other annotated bibliographies, number two is the Geisel and or Geisel Honor winning books. You're going to see that much of this is the same. APA format, look online, alpha by author in um, order, annotations 200 words or less, note the year the award was given, at the end of the annotation, make sure it's pre uh, presented in an attractive format. A couple things will, will change here, and one of them is this. For Caldecott, I asked you to concentrate on artwork because that's what the award is given for. The Geisel is given to books that help support early readers. They're pattern books, predictable books, easy reader books. So I would expect to see something like that contained here and maybe even some information for parents about how to encourage children to read at home. Again, be sure you watch the screencast, be sure you leave sufficient time to do this. And a little extra thing here, proofread your work. Uh, please use the, the tools that you have in Word. If you look up here, you'll see there are all kinds of tools that can help me when I review a document. I can do my word count. I can make sure that my spelling and grammar is done correctly. And it really does matter that you look at those kinds of things before you turn in an assignment. Scanning down now, here's annotated bibliography number three, the Coretta Scott King list. Again, you're going to see some of the same information here. Uh, number seven is a little bit different. Use the lists for Coretta Scott King for the Illustrator Award because these are the picture books. They're more appropriate to children's literature class. And they're also going to be faster to read, which I think becomes a real issue in the summer. Note that since this award is also given for illustration, I'd like to see something in your annotation about illustration. So once again, follow the directions, check the screencast, leave enough time to submit this in time. Annotated bibliography number four is the Puta Belpre Award. This is the award given for um, Hispanic art and text. And once again, same kinds of information at the top here. Use the award for illustration because they're more appropriate for our audience. Note the year of the award present the bibliography attractively, and perhaps mention something about uh, why this is an appropriate book for Hispanics uh, within your response. And finally, number five, this is uh, a selection of 10 books from the New York Times bestseller list from January to May of 2014. Not all of these books will be brand spanking new books. It will not be unusual for some of the award winners to show back up here, but it's up to you. Again, the first set of instructions are the same. Uh, please note the date that the book appeared on the list at the end of the annotation. Since these are bestsellers, your response should mention why they might be bestsellers. Remember, it's to be attractively presented, and again, pay attention to deadlines, following directions, all that good stuff like that. 
there's going to be a separate screencast for you on how to write an annotation. So you should be looking for that. It's going to be up here at Live Finder, and all these screencasts will also be linked to Blackboard. So there's your annotated bibliography assignment. Now let's come back to Live Finders and take a look at the textbook assignments for the summer. Once again, open the file. And I've given you uh, kind of an introduction to what I'm doing differently this summer. Because time is so crucial, I'm trying to combine the reading of the textbook with the blogging of the required books. So, um, I've tried to divide the required books into sets. They're going to be identified as sets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For each set, you're to re read the assigned chapter or pages in the textbook and then you're to apply the criteria that's discussed within those pages or chapters to that set of books. And then finally, write a brief reflection for each set as one of the blog posts. You'll have a total of five reflections about the textbook that will be part of the blogs that you create. So when you're doing your blog, please label them as sets one, <coughs> excuse me, two, three, four, and five. I will be uh, talking about, again, how to write a blog post and what that blog post should look like in a different screencast. This is just simply a screencast that goes over the assignments. So you can see here the first set of books right here. And for those, you're going to read chapter two, which has to do with picture storybooks because that's what all these are, and pay particular attention to the criteria on pages 53, 54, 57, 58, and 59. That's what you're going to be applying. As you go from set to set, you're going to see the same thing happen. Here's the list of books. Here's the reading assignment. So set three, the list of books, the reading assignment. Set four, list of books and the reading assignment. And set five, list of books and reading assignment. Notice that I put your due dates here at the end of this. So your textbook reading is going to be tied to your blog. This is the final assignment for the class. And I have some general directions here. A future screencast will take you step by step through these assignments. I will give you some examples of how you should approach this assignment. The first thing you're going to need to do is create a blog for this class. You can select from a variety of free sites, LiveJournal, Blogger, WordPress, does not matter to me. Uh, I encourage you to use a new site and not to use an existing blog you might have unless you have some way of creating the blog post for this course separately, distinctly from all the others you've already posted. I suggest setting up this blog now because you're going to be blogging each of the required trade books for the course and if you have it set up, then it's much easier to put information in. Here are the, the requirements for the blog post. You need to have the cover of each book. You can pull those covers in from Amazon, from Tidal Wave, from Google Images, from any number of sources, but you need to have the covers of the books. You need to use APA format for the bibliographic citation, and then your blog post starts with a summary of each of the books that you have read and you write those summaries yourself. Then in addition to that you're going to include the information from the textbook assignments. Remember we just looked at those. Include other information such as book trailers, read-alikes, lesson plans. That's what makes this blog I think a very powerful thing. It will be easy in the long run I think if you complete that blog entry as soon as you complete the reading of the book and the textbook assignment tied into it. This is the final assignment for the class. You can work as you see fit as long as it's submitted by the due date, but I'm telling you that if you hold off and you try to catch everything up at the same time, you might just run out of time and the blog might not turn out as well as it needs to. What you will be turning into me is a URL that will take me to your blog site. Again, a future screencast will show you exactly how to do this assignment. 
So be looking for that on LiveBinder. It will also be up on Blackboard as well. That's all for this webcast. I'll see you soon with another example.